job, P. Our move to Alaska is approaching very quickly. We head across country in just three short weeks and we have got so much to do before we can leave. One of the things is putting our Polaris Ranger that we bought for the Alaska homestead back together again. You guys know we sold our homestead property about eight months ago here in Virginia and have been living in a temporary apartment ever since. So what we've done is rented a garage just for a month so that we can put this Polaris Ranger back together because we are shipping it out with a private company that's gonna be shipping it across country and then across the ocean all the way to Alaska. They do require it to be assembled for shipment, so we're working on getting that done. When we moved from the homestead property, we had nowhere to store the Ranger, so we've been storing it in our enclosed trailer, but it wouldn't fit in here with the cab on it, so we had to completely take it apart, and now we have to put it back together again. I know, right? We took it apart like what, seven, eight months ago? <laughs> you lost the video. things that we have been working on is separating what we're going to take across country with us in our trailer and what the movers are going to be packing up when they pack up our storage unit. So today we're also working on getting some of these heavier items that we're going to have the movers move into our storage unit. Some of the things that we're gonna be taking across country with us, we've been storing in the storage unit so that it wouldn't take up space in the apartment, like our wall heater for the cabin, our stackable washer and dryer, and just some other pieces that we are gonna be taking with us in the enclosed trailer. So today, we're getting all that stuff out of the storage unit and stacking it in the apartment because we don't want the movers to accidentally take the things that we need right away at the cabin. Now that we're done moving everything back and forth and playing musical furniture, <laughs> we are going to be driving out to our old neighbor's property and returning the trailer. We have been so blessed with our friends out there. They've been letting us store our enclosed trailer on their property until we head out for Alaska. So we're gonna go ahead and return this there and leave it for the next few weeks until we're ready to pack up the apartment and head out to the homestead. You guys probably remember in the very beginning of our 
YouTube channel. Some of the very first videos were recorded at our farmhouse property. This was an 18 acre property that Joe and I bought and we built it up from the ground up. I'm talking built the farmhouse up with the builder, pasture fencing. I mean, we did so much work on this property, you guys, and it was bittersweet to sell it, but I'm so grateful that we did because as I've shared with you guys in the past, it allowed us to pay off our debt and allowed us to buy our Alaska homestead debt-free, and that is such a blessing. Got those ones in. That's a start. It's taken us a bit longer to reconstruct the cab of the Polaris than I thought. <laughs> so I've come back to the apartment really quick from the garage to make me and Joe an evening cup of coffee. Maybe this will help give him a little bit more energy to uh, knock out this task. We bought this Polaris Ranger about a year ago in preparation for our move to Alaska. And I can't tell you guys how excited I am to have this on the homestead up there. It's a dual cab, which is gonna be perfect for Fit and Parker in the cab, the, the dogs for when we go out hiking and camping and things like that. Joe has put a lot of work into this. He added a heater to it. We mounted a snow plow, just done all kinds of stuff that's gonna make it really, really convenient for the Alaska homestead.
Hey you guys, good morning. It is the next day. So we just got a phone call from the movers. They are 30 minutes out. They're packing up our storage unit today. I'm feeling a little discombobulated because one, the house is a mess, still packing, nothing is normal right now. But the movers were supposed to call us for a pre-inspection date. They were supposed to schedule a pre-inspection where we meet them and they kind of assess how much stuff we have so they know how long it's gonna take them to pack up our belongings. They never did that. Instead, we got a call yesterday that said, we're gonna be there tomorrow to pack up your stuff between this time and this time. And I'm like, okay. And then they had a specific time, right? That they were supposed to be here. Well, they just called us and said, we're 30 minutes out and it's two hours before the time frame they gave us. So Joe already left with the truck because we had some last minute stuff in the apartment that we need them to move for us because we only want to take a cross country uh, our immediate furniture, dishes, and all the things that we're gonna need when we get to the, the Alaska cabin. So now my car is full of some additional items, so we gotta get those over to storage. And uh, anyway, I mean, I'm excited, right? This is a big step. We have been paying for this storage unit for about eight or nine months now, ever since we sold the homestead property and moved into the apartment temporarily. So I'm really happy to get rid of that monthly bill and just kind of seeing us getting one step closer to getting out of here. Usually when I record, I make my bed, <laughs> try to pick up. That's just how I am. If I have people over for dinner, I try to pick up. Like I just, it's important the way my house looks, but I think right now I need to just like let it go. We're moving. So I just got in the car with Parker to go and meet Joe at the storage unit with the movers and pretty much had a panic attack. I think I mentioned to you guys before, I can't remember if it was on the channel or if it was over my podcast or on an Instagram live, or I don't know. I know I've shared it with some of you, but in 2020, I woke up in the middle of the night, thought I was dying, thought I was having a heart attack. My heart was just racing. I could hear it in my head. I could feel it in my throat. My body was tingling. I couldn't breathe. My chest felt like bricks were sitting on it. And I grabbed Joe's arm and I just, he immediately jumped up and, and rushed me to the ER. Like I thought I was dying, right? <laughs> Never had this happen in my life. And they did all the tests, all the things, sent me to a neurologist and, uh, Initially, I thought that it was side effects from my breast implants. I've shared a little bit of this with you guys. I had breast implants for 15 years since I was 23 years old. And some of you may know that uh, back then it was like, oh, breast implants are perfectly safe. They're FDA approved. But since the FDA has now identified that there are several cancers that are actually caused by breast implants and they're the manufacturers are required to put FDA black box labels on them, warning people. Anyway, blessed in print, blessed, say that fast three times, breast implant illness. Breast implant illness is a real thing. And a, a lot of women, it's just sweeping globally. Women that are having autoimmune issues, all kinds of things from their implants. Anyway, they're not lifetime devices. So it was either time for me to get them replaced or get them taken out. And I started having these weird symptoms, had that panic attack in the middle of the night. They couldn't find out what it was. Blood work came back normal. Everything was normal. And I told Joe, I just want them out because I've always been healthy and active fit person. And all of a sudden I'm not feeling healthy and I'm not going to get them replaced. And inevitably sign on for a lifetime of surgeries to keep replacing breast implants for the rest of my life when I am not who I used to be. And I love my body the way God made me. I didn't need implants to begin with, but you make stupid decisions when you're young, right? I can't find my tripod stand because we're moving. So if the camera's shaking, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got 
muscle failure from holding the camera. But I went to the neurologist and he said, uh, basically, you know, you don't have anything wrong with you. He said, have you ever been told that you have anxiety? And I was like, no, I don't have anxiety. Like you guys, I come from a long line of dysfunction, alcoholics, drug addicts, pill popper, pill poppers, like my whole family, like is totally dysfunctional. And so I am to the other extreme. I refuse to take any pills unless I absolutely have to. I used to think when people talked about anxiety and panic attacks, like I used to think it was fake. I, I'm sorry to admit that. I, I used to be like, okay, whatever. Yeah, right. Like take a deep breath, calm yourself down, soak in hot bubble bath. Like why can't you control your emotions? Like, you know, what is this? People going to the ER with panic attacks until I had a panic attack in 2020. And then I was like, okay, wow. So anyway, the neurologist wanted to put me on pills. I said, no, I will try to look at natural remedies. And so I've done a lot of research since that panic attack that night. I have had, I would say eight to 10 panic attacks since then. So in the last two years, some mild, some bigger, um, I use essential oils. I use breathing techniques. I use certain things to get me out of that mode when I get into it. Right. And really a panic attack is like, it's fear. It is the fight or flight response. The adrenaline that your body has when you are afraid of something, you think something is going to happen to you. And what I didn't know in 2020 when I had that panic attack is that I was having a panic attack and I didn't know that I could breathe and do certain techniques to bring myself out of it. I did not control my breathing. It, it went rapid. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was dying, which of course made it worse. Right? So I don't know you guys, I, I do pretty good for the most part. Now that I know what they are, I can feel it coming on my, my body will start to tingle. The side of my skull will actually tingle like that feeling when your hands go to sleep my hands, my feet start to tingle, my heart starts to race. And I don't know what it was. I just got in the car with Parker just now and I just got hot and started to panic and I had to sit there for a minute and I, I just kind of cried as I breathed through it. And honestly, you guys, I could say all day long, I'm not stressed out with everything going on with the Coast Guard, with what they're doing to Joe. I trust the Lord. Please don't take my tears as a sign that I do not trust God to bring us through this because I do. And I've said this before, God made us emotional creatures for a reason. He gave us tears. So I am not sinning by crying. I am not sinning by being stressed. I'm just a real person and I have emotions and the uncertainty of all of this is killing me because of my childhood and the way I was raised and things that I went through, I am a control freak. And it is very hard for me when I don't have control of a situation or I don't know the outcome of it, or I don't know like this is going to be okay. I don't know this bill is going to be paid. I don't know where we're going to live. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like if I don't know the outcome, it causes me great anxiety apparently. <laughs> In this situation, I just don't know the outcome of it. And I think maybe with the movers coming to pick up the storage unit, household goods, maybe was just that realization that because if they kick Joe out because of refusing the COVID vaccine, we are now obligated to pay for that shipment to get it to Alaska. If he retires, they'll get it all the way to Alaska. If he gets kicked out, they're only obligated to get it back to his home of record, which is California. And then we would be responsible for the difference from California to Alaska to barge our household items. And I don't know what that cost looks like. And so maybe the fact that they're actually here ready to pack it up, um, you know, is stressing me out more than I thought it was. Once they take that storage unit full of household goods and I'm talking it's loaded. You guys have seen it on several videos. We have so much stuff in there. Once they take it, you know, it's done. Like I can't get it back. And either it's all going to be paid for by the military. If Joe gets to retire or it's not, and then we're on the hook for an undetermined amount of money. Cause I don't know what the cost is from California to Alaska. <laughs> so 
Oh, you guys, I don't know. We're moving forward one day at a time. So many of you have asked, what's the status of Joe? What's going on with the mandate? We've heard nothing on the lawsuit yet. So no injunctive relief for the Coasties. Um, they're still saying they're going to kick him out, but we haven't received an official discharge date or paperwork or anything. So right now, all we can do is execute the current retirement orders that we have and move forward as if we're going to get to retire. I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here in this apartment in limbo and wait for them to pull their head out of their you know what's to figure out what they want to do with our family. I'm not doing that. Okay. Can I just say something? I'm, I'm editing this video and I see things as I'm editing and I'm just like, I, I'm like, I need to say something. If one more person tells me that my husband's in the military, so his job is to follow orders and comply, I'm going to lose it. The amount of ignorance today in our society is mind blowing. This lady proceeded to tell me that we took an oath when we joined the military. And she says she was in the military too. Well, sister, if you took an oath when you joined as well, you should know what that oath is. And that oath is to protect and defend our constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So for people to tell me that just because Joe's in the military, he doesn't have any constitutional rights, that is completely false. Like, so we're to defend the constitution and that constitution doesn't apply to us because we're active duty. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And yes, as a military member, you are to comply with lawful orders. This vaccine mandate is unlawful. It is not a lawful order. And you guys already know, like, I'm not going to go into why it's unlawful. I have a whole podcast show on that. So if you want my, my reasons and my thoughts on that, you can check out the podcast Life with Tina. And I have two shows on there actually concerning this very topic. But my husband has served honorably for 20 years. So believe me when I say he knows how to comply and he knows how to follow orders. And my job as a military spouse is to support my husband in complying with those orders. But when there's orders that are unlawful and unethical, it's also my job to support him when he chooses not to comply with that. So oy, these people, I've had so many comments because we are so open with this whole situation that we're going through with the military. I have so many people that are just like, oh, you joined the military. That's how it is. You got to just march on and follow orders. So if, if my husband's commander tells him to go sell drugs on the street corner or go murder somebody or do something that's against the law, is he just supposed to comply with that because he's active duty military and he's just supposed to follow orders? Like, you've got to be kidding me. No. If it's unethical or it's illegal in unlawful order, it's his obligation to stand up and say, no, I cannot comply with that. And this is why, with all due respect. Anyway, got a lot of comments about that. It's just asinine to think that the Constitution of the United States of America doesn't apply to active duty members, the very people that defend the Constitution. So I don't know, I went to the doctor last week. I've been having a pain in my stomach for about a year a pain in the same exact spot. Didn't have a clue what it was. Um, it was like a burning sensation. So at first I thought I pulled a muscle, but it just kept happening. So long story short, I got a referral, went to the gastro, is it the gastroenterologist? Gastro, whatever that doctor is, it checks your like stomach, intestines, all that stuff. Had an endoscopy procedure last week. I didn't tell you guys about this. It's been crazy. Um, so they put a camera down my throat, put me under. And uh, turns out <laughs> I have not one, but three ulcers in my stomach. Like, you guys, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? I'm 40. I'm active. I'm healthy. I'm, how do I have ulcers, right? So I'm like, stress obviously makes ulcers worse. So they're telling me that ulcers are caused by two things. There's an H. pylori bacteria in your stomach. A lot of people have it and don't even know they have it, never have issues from it. Some people, it actually causes ulcers because it eats away at the stomach lining. So they biopsied my ulcers, uh, one, to check for cancer, and two, to check for this bacteria. If it turns out the bacteria caused the ulcers, they're gonna prescribe me an antibiotic to get rid of the bacteria. And either way, I have been prescribed a, uh, uh, 
some kind of stomach acid medication that I take twice a day for the next six to eight weeks to lower my acid levels to enable healing of my stomach lining. So I should be getting those results back in a couple days to find out um, if it was in fact the bacteria that caused the ulcers, but I guess I'm more stressed out than I think I am. I don't know. Now I'm just venting. I should probably go. I just want it all to work out. I just want him to be able to retire. I just, um, I want to move on with my life. I just want to be free of this not knowing. It's been over a year that we've been fighting this mandate <clears throat> and not knowing what was going to happen. So, um, I just want to be free of it. Whether he gets kicked out or he gets to retire at this point, you guys, I honest to goodness, I don't give a damn. I just want to be done with the military. They disgust me. So anyway, Joe's probably wondering where I'm at. I should probably go, but I just wanted to chat with you guys for a second, like let you know where I'm at emotionally. Um, I've talked to some of you. I know a lot of you suffer from anxiety and panic attacks too. And um, I just, the best thing for me is my lavender essential oil, my all time favorite. I rub it all over my wrists, the back of my ears, my forehead, my chest, and the back of my neck, and I just lay down and I just breathe it in, and I take really deep breaths for probably about 10 minutes straight. And when I say deep breaths, I count in for four to five seconds, exhale for four to five seconds, uh, and that um, helps the panic attack to kind of subside and go away. So I actually read, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but it actually, when you breathe deeply that way, it actually does something in your brain that turns off that trigger, that fight or flight response. So that's been the most helpful thing for me is breathing and my essential oils, but I actually feel a little bit better after talking to you guys. So thanks. I appreciate you listening. Appreciate you guys being here. We love you guys. The comments and emails and messages and you guys are helpful. A lot of you have reached out to your senators about our story. Um, so not just like being there to watch the videos, but actually taking action. Um, it's amazing. The support is amazing. It's just so reassuring to know like there are still good people out there. This world is ugly. This culture is appalling, but it's not all bad, right? Okay. I'm going to stop. We're going to go. going to go meet up with Joe, meet these movers and get that unit packed up. All right, so I just got here to the storage unit. Oh gosh, this door in the elevator is trying to eat me. And, no, no, oh my God. No. Is okay. it trying to close on me? I think it is. Go hit the open button. Which one is this one? Yes. Okay, <gasps> Parker, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Okay, oh my gosh. going up with our stuff in it without us and the door just tried to eat me <laughs> and caught that on camera okay anyway I got here to storage and they were already done so apparently this company is just here to pack everything and then another company comes in a couple days to actually pick up so their job was easy because we've already packed everything uh, very well too. We've moved. Joe and I counted last night in bed when we were talking. We moved 17 times in the last 23 years that we've been married. 17 times. So we know all too well about wrapping and packing. And honestly, I would much rather pack my stuff myself. Like don't touch my stuff. Like if it's packed, taped, sealed up, leave it alone. Um, so their job was easy. There was just like some miscellaneous stuff that they had to pack up, but for the most part, that's all there was to it. So I guess in a couple days, another company comes and they load up the truck with our stuff and uh, that'll be that. Do it, Joe. <laughs> Hurry, before the elevator tries to eat you again. Go ahead, P. Diddy. Take your bike down there. Go. Next time you see that, we'll be in Alaska. Yep. All right, so everything's packed up, ready to go. Got all of our guns that we cannot take through Canada. Those are gonna be shipped with our household goods. It's crazy. It's 
looks like all. Hopefully they don't show it missing. Yeah, hopefully they don't show it missing. <laughs> but Joey, I'm confused because I thought they were supposed to pack stuff. Like, why is my dehydrator not in a box? Well, I think they were saying that the other people pack it. Then what was their job? They were supposed to pack everything. Oh. There's a lot of stuff that's not even packed. Baby, I have no idea. Baby, that's why you have to ask questions. Like, I think they know what they're doing. You can't assume people know what they're doing, Joe. Nothing is in boxes back there, Joe. I don't know, babe. We'll see what happens. Okay, but the boxes protect our belongings. Like my $400 food dehydrator is not even packed in a box. My my canner. Where's my trampoline? Well, yeah, they didn't do a lot of that stuff back there either, so I'm guessing they do it when they pick it up. I don't know. So, they have to pack it in a big crate anyways to move it. Baby, I know it has to be packed in a crate, but I'm talking about individual things that can get scratched and broken during shipment. Yeah, sure. we'll sure okay. All right. All right. Yes, I am currently sitting in my closet editing this video because Parker has a friend over and they're super loud. <laughs> And I had to do some voiceovers and sometimes in the other rooms I get like a loud echo. So anyway, I just popped on to let you guys know. So the movers didn't do what they were supposed to do. Um, a two day packing job, they spent an hour and a half at the storage unit. So I did end up having to call the company. They sent somebody out today. We had to go meet them for a second time. And, uh, they packed up multiple boxes that should have been packed up the first time. So I knew I wasn't crazy. Like there was shelf after shelf stacked in front of each other in that storage unit. And they didn't even pull the shelves out to see what was behind them. So military, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you guys move, they put everything in a box. They wrap everything and they put everything in a box so that your items don't get broken, scratched, whatever during shipment. So we got them to come back out and do what they should have done yesterday. But end of story. It's all packed up now. They're coming back in two days to load the truck and then the storage unit will be empty and all that stuff will be on its way to Alaska. All right, you guys, I guess that's it for now. Um, we will continue to take you guys on the journey with us as we prep and get ready to head across country to Alaska. You want to tell everybody how you're feeling? You can't run from the camera, Joe. <laughs> tell everybody what's going through your mind, Joe. What are your thoughts right now? I don't have any. Do you not have any thoughts, Joe? Mm -hmm. I know you have thoughts. Because mm -mm. you keep me up talking about them at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying I keep you up at night talking about my thoughts? Yeah. There might be a little truth to that, but he does talk. He talks a little bit more than what he's leading on, don't you? Mm -mm. Are you getting excited or are you feeling more stressed out right now? Uh-huh. What's, <laughs> what's your main emotion? Mm. What's an emotion? Babe, we've been through this with counseling, okay? What's your main emotion? I can tell you my main emotion. Do you want to know what my main emotion is? I'm still in limbo. Limbo. I don't know if limbo's an emotion. I know it's not. I'm but it's like saying. the feeling that comes from being in limbo. So a little stressed out. Are you stressed out? Do you feel stressed out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should stop talking, Joe, because remember that one guy said, oh my God, you talk so much. How does your husband live with you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I actually had a comment like that. I was like. I didn't know what was up. That dude was a brat. What? Yeah. He's a good I talked too much. A good guy? He was mean. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Not showcasing the haters up in her. All right, you guys, we're going to head off for now, and we will see you very soon on the next video.